Welcome to another episode of ChristianPodcast.com. Today is a beautiful Monday, and we're sitting with Char, Brother Sen, and with Mili Gudinho. Let's welcome them to the show. Uh. <laughs> okay, so let's get to it. You know, it's funny. Sometimes I like to waste time <laughs> on my videos. Like, I love for, like, the first five minutes to be just, like, literally, like, wasting time, you know, just saying stuff. And <laughs> But what I find interesting is that the American culture is more like, let's get to the point, mm. you know, <laughs> like, let's not waste time. And, I mean, I think we're musicians, you know, so I think we're going to connect a little bit in that in that sense. One of my favorite bands is Kings of Leon, okay, and yeah. they have a song that says, take the time to waste the moment. And I, I really love that because yeah, I'm like, I'm all about that. You know, <laughs> take the time to waste the moment. Like, uh, slow down. We're not in a rush. You know, also another thing I've been learning and I want to do more in the podcast is to pause. Because I feel like whenever there's a pause, you know, I think as a podcaster, yeah. you're like, oh, you got to fill in the space. Sure. You know, there, there can't be any silence. You know, people will get bored or they'll tune out. I'm like... That's not true. Hmm. I think we need time to process, right? If something is like really impacting people like uh, mentally, like in their their cognitive resonance is like, mm, sometimes they need space to say, hmm, that makes sense, yeah, yeah. right? So I want to do that in this episode. You know, I want to just have space. Just take a for, break. and <laughs> Yeah, for a little bit of just like wasting time, getting to know you for sure. You know, but not being in a rush in a sense. I know I mean, time is important and, you know, you probably have <laughs> a big uh, agenda to fill in, you know, every day, weekly, probably. You have a family. But let's start there. You know, how are you guys feeling today? Mili, Char, what's uh, up? Well, I don't want to be negative here, but it was a tough morning for me. And I know why. We mm. watched a movie last night and it was about Christmas. Mm. And I was watching the movie and, you know, this poor, poor family, the, the mom is not around. They don't, they don't have parents and they never show the mother on the movie. <laughs> I, so was like, like, what? I was so mad. Like I was having not, and, and the, the whole thing is the, the, they're doing a play, the, the, you know, the nativity. Mm -hmm. And supposed to be sweet and cute. It's but called the best I, Christmas pageant I, ever. But oh, okay, I yeah. went to sleep like mad and I cry and my kids are like, why are you crying? <laughs> you cry in every movie, mom. <laughs> I know. It was my story, right? My mom, mm. my mom and my dad were, were not in the picture and I was poor and it's like, I hate Christmas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like how is gonna be this Christmas? How I can tell my kids and and inspire them that it's not about the what we're gonna receive. Always expecting like me, 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 me. I want more and more, and I hate Christmas for that mm. because I told them every Christmas, hey guys, I'll pick two two things, okay. And they pick two big things. <laughs> They're smart. <laughs> yeah. So I wake up today kind of the same feeling, mad. Yeah. You know, like, you know, as a humans, we always want more and more. We, we don't have a uh, llenadera, decimos. We, We're never satisfied. Yeah, uh -huh. Absolutely. So. That's the gift we need, the uh, satisfier. But, <laughs> but I was with this group uh, from my son's school which is your yeah. son too and in the prayer meeting and everybody's throwing you know we need to pray for this is it like real problems right and i thought oh god forgive me i didn't even uh tell something like can you pray this for me because mine were nothing right so i think god talked to me while we were praying so now i'm better <laughs> I was like so dark. I don't know. And I don't have my coffee. Yeah. Mm. Char, I am addicted to coffee. Right. I love right. coffee every so, morning. Yeah. But today, I'm, Is it a I, good need addiction? To, I need to do a blood test today. Oh, okay. So no That's coffee right. this yeah, yeah. morning. Oof. So like, I'm going to go. Uh, hopefully I survive today. <laughs> <laughs> Is the headache started already? No, no, no. No? I'm okay. okay. It's yeah. coming. You oh, know, yeah. It's coming. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Millie. Char, what, what about you? Yeah, I, you know, I felt like yesterday I was kind of hit with 
I don't know, just some heaviness and just, I think kind of all last night I was processing with my wife and then even this morning, I think just processing um, just with the Lord, just, you know, that question in the Psalms, why are you cast down my soul? Like what's going on within mm-hmm. me? And, and so just wrestling and uh, I'm reading a book right now by uh, author Scott McKnight and Laura Berenger. I think that's how you say her last name, who is his daughter. And it's all about church leadership and specifically about just goodness and how basically you create a culture of goodness in your community. And this book specifically is, is basically about yourself. Like you can't take your people where you haven't gone yourself. And, Mm. and so just as I was reading it this morning, there were just a few things that I just felt like, okay, I feel like the Lord's kind of re-upping the invitation for me just to kind of come back home and focus on some pieces of my character that just, yeah, like, you know, you work on things and then you kind of plateau or cruise, you know, like, okay, I think I've got that and you're, mm. you're moving forward. But yeah, I just felt like this morning it was just like, no, you need to actually press in in this area and, and focus on these things. So I feel like I have a little bit of clarity on that. And um, But yeah, this is kind of the story of my life. Like I, I kind of go through these bouts of, I don't know if you would call them depression, but just like this heaviness. And hey, I, and, devil, get out of here yeah. right now, right? <laughs> and, and yeah, I'm reading that book and it's kind of the same thing what mm. I'm reading. And I'm complaining all the time. Like, And then I thought, okay, okay, I mean, when I'm gonna, where I'm going to apply all this I'm learning? I'm a marketing person. Yeah. So for me, it's easier to understand what's going on in a church or in a company, you know, because as a marketing person, I need to know, basically, I need I need to know what, what you want and create necessities. Sure. It's so sad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what it is, right? And I had the opportunity to um, work in AYSO, volunteering cooking. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my gosh, I have a beautiful team there where I can work and create a community. But it's so funny because the more we want to work with people and give them the best that we have and share God through whatever technique yeah, we're yeah. learning. The, the devil, it's like, mm. you know, like fighting against us. Yes. Mm. Wow. Ah, okay. I, I want to read a piece of scripture that I was reading this morning, but I, I have I have kind of like a list of questions, but like I was saying, I almost like sometimes I feel like, Ah, I never want to be restricted by my own questions or sure, yeah. what I was thinking the podcast would go, you know. So as I'm listening, you know, I'm just trying to step into like, hmm, what is God doing, you know. So one of them, and I'm just going to look it up here, you know, because I, I was reading in the Bible this morning. And I'll just give you a little bit of context. Uh, I've been reading the chronological Bible in a year. Yeah. Right. And I mean, it's been super helpful. So we just kind of like started maybe two weeks ago or a little bit less in the new testament yeah right so now we're in matthew luke uh mark and it's amazing man just like seeing that story you know the i don't know just I'm, i'm not a pastor i'm not like a theological anything but the fact that i'm reading the bible where like all the pieces are chronologically aligned it's been really helpful but anyways one of the the stuff that I read today, uh, I'm just going to go to my highlights in Spanish. It might be in Spanish. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Just going to look it up. Okay. Matthew 13, 12. It says, to those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. Mm. And they will have an abundance of knowledge. Okay, that was that. That's what caught me. That abundance of knowledge, right? So, and I'm just gonna say it again, and then it says a little bit more. Matthew thirteen twelve. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given, and they will have an abundance of knowledge. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. Oh, I mean, that was super powerful for me as I listened this morning because I feel like 
with God, like God is so much like that. Like I've, I've encountered that God is so much like that. The more you seek him, mm. the more you find. Yeah. Right. And, and in a sense, like if you're not seeking, it, it also goes away, <laughs> you know, sure. or goes yeah, to yeah. waste, you know? So, um, I don't want to deal too long on this, you know, but you were asking me like how long you guys been doing the podcast, uh, when you came in, you know, yeah, you yeah. saw the studio and stuff. And I was saying, well, we started a while back and I was kind of like just trying to connect how I was really inspired by the bad Christian podcast and the Vox podcast with Mike Erie and the bad Christian podcast was a podcast by, um, popular somewhat Christian band, I would say, uh, at least here in America. They were with Tooth and Nail Records, and you know, you're a musician, so you probably know, yeah, like, yeah. You know about that sort of stuff. But uh, they were really inspiring, you know, and I think for at the beginning, they were asking really good questions and they were really honest in their, you know, pursuit of just bringing really good topics to the table and just having the podcast as a conversation place and like, let's talk about things that maybe we don't really talk about sure. in the church. Yeah. Right, so I was really helpful, but then you know it kind of like started going a route where like, are you still seeking? Mm. Because if you're not seeking, then mm. less knowledge comes to you, sure, yeah. right? So in that sense, I feel like wow, like God is, God has granted us the ability to talk to so many people in the last few years. You know, like people that I could kind of like only would have dreamed of yeah you know and and part of that is talking to pastors you know i don't know why like i to me like pastors are um and, and it's so good that you're saying you know like i have my own Bar. battles yeah, right sure. i'm still dealing with and you mentioned like depression and stuff like that but anyways all that to say like to me pastors are, are kind of like superheroes you know <laughs> And not in the sense of like, you know, Superman or sure, Batman yeah, or whatever, you know, but it seems to me like a pastor is someone that is doing this that we just read, you know, they're inquiring and the more they inquire, the more is revealed to them in a sense, mm -hmm. you know, and the more they know. And then when they pass it on to others, that's why they're teaching. That's why they're in these platforms because yeah, yeah. they've been asking good questions and God's been, you know, kind of like answering those. And then you come to the congregation and it's like, oh, cool. You know, so that's kind of like the 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 approach i have to pastors are like oh they they have a lot of knowledge right but on the other hand you're a human too yeah yeah right so how do you feel about that you know just reading that verse and yeah oh yeah i love that verse uh reminds me of a passage in the gospel of mark mark's my favorite gospel for a variety of reasons but yeah, I think that this is a, a motif in the Gospel of Mark where Jesus wants seekers and mm. he's uh, inviting us to press into him. And so it's really interesting in the Gospel of Mark, I'm not sure about Matthew, but uh, this story comes on the tail of the parable of the sower. Mm. And, and I think in each of the Gospels, as Jesus tells it, he just leaves. And it's like, everybody's confused. Like even the disciples are like, what did that mean? And as they ask that question to Jesus, like they're pressing in and he says, to you has been given the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, basically they're blinded. They, mm. they won't receive this. And so there is this invitation from Jesus, man, like if you're confused, press in. If you're, you ask questions, mm. you know, and as you do, more will be revealed. Uh, the wrong response is to just say, well, that's ridiculous. Or just to say, well, don't question God or, or whatever it might be. Whatever keeps us from actually pressing into Jesus is the wrong answer. He wants us to come to him to inquire. And as we do that, he's gonna give us a deeper revelation of himself, a deeper understanding of ourselves. And so this is actually how trans spiritual transformation takes place is by pressing into the person of Jesus, you know, and more is revealed. I think just if I could comment just on the note about the pastor and um, yeah, a lot of knowledge and these things and revelation, very true, absolutely pressing into scripture, pressing into the Lord, um, understanding these things. But I do think the essential part of pastoral ministry is that it actually has application in my life. Like I'm living it out. You know, I'm walking it out in my own life. And I think there are too many of us who are in this role who we get up and we say the right things and we know the scripture backwards and forwards, but 
okay, how is you know mercy being manifest in my life? How am I living a life of generosity or hospitality? You know, I can talk about the church being a community that welcomes people and you know is, is, makes a nice spread and, and you know just at your service. But if I'm not doing that, if there's no application in my life, then actually like I'm keeping the spirit from doing a full transformative work in me. You know, and, and this is what Jesus accused the religious leaders of, right? They say the right things, mm. but they don't actually live it out themselves. So do what they say, but don't do what they do. Mm. So that's the uh, word I love. It's hard for me to pronounce. Beto, you can help me. Well, incongruent. Incongruent? Oh, yeah. Incongruent. incongruent. Yeah. Uh -huh, incongruent. You know, yeah. I love that because, um, yeah, it's mm. hard to say, act, and think. The same way, sure. right? Mm -hmm. I'm saying like, I want to be like super healthy. I'm a <laughs> healthy person yeah. and I'm eating fast food every day. No, right. I'm not, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. it's hard. It's hard. It's yeah. tough. But we have the power in Jesus. We need to activate that the Holy Spirit, yeah. you know, you know what I did in my fridge? <laughs> my kids were laughing at me because we have a planner and Beto bought double. I don't know why. I, I don't know. One is like per month and the other one is like weekly, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Have the dates, but we never do anything on the day. So my kids, they color there. They, <laughs> they right, they, to do drawings. Doodles. They, or they do yeah. toilets and poop and like <laughs> kids are so funny. And then, you know, there was a toilet in every And then day. a girl with yeah. a poop in their head, like, what are they talking about? <laughs> no. <laughs> and I erased that. And I I, I have, uh, you know, my day, my book where I can do my notes. And I, 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 I remember I wrote, I am affirmations. But now from the world, the new age, no, no, no. What think God that I am? Yeah. There were so many. I discovered, I found so many, you know, I'm the head and not the tail, that, um, that I, I have righteous, right, get righteousness, 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 you know, through him. And it's like beautiful. So I, uh, I did it like three days ago and I just wake up like, oh, now I'm going to, because I'm at the kitchen all the time cooking, Yeah, you know, to believe who I am mm. in Jesus. It's so helpful. Because yeah. I, I'm, you know, my kids the other day make me sad because they told me, oh, Mommy, you're always so sad. You're, oh, <laughs> <laughs> why you say that? Because Beth is always laughing. <laughs> you know, he's the, fr the free spirit. Yeah. And I'm more like, oh, we're going to do this and this and that. And the house clean and niños. Right? Yeah. Like, I don't like that. They saw me like I'm a sad person. <laughs> and sadness. <laughs> yeah, I'm sad. <laughs> yeah. Do you think the legacy and, well, it would be interesting to, to ask you your legacy, right? I mean, you're part of Calvary Chapel, mm -hmm. but I'll give people a little, bit of a, a little bit of context where we met you because our son, Joseph, is going to... Um, um, private Christian school in Newport Beach called Pacifica Christian. He just started this year. It's been amazing so far. You know, we were praying for years yeah. before he even got in, you know, got an amazing scholarship. Um, thanks to Pacifica yeah. and all the people, you know, behind it, this really great team. Um, and then in one of the parent meetings, we met you, right? Yeah, we're yeah. just kind of like, oh, I like, I, I like Char, you know, he's got tattoos. And <laughs> I feel like... Um, I don't know. I could relate to you maybe sure, yeah, yeah. more than I could relate to other people just because of, you know, oh, okay, he, he's kind of kind of like in my style, age. right? Like, yeah, yeah, we come from a similar background, uh -huh. taste, preference. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you notice one another, sure. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I could, I could tell like, oh, he, he probably likes music and stuff like that, right? So, I mean, that was kind of cool. And then as I got to know you a little bit more, like, oh, you know, you're a pastor in Calvary Chapel. And I'm not hugely familiar with sure. everything Calvary Chapel other than, you know, the movies I've seen of oh, sure, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Jesus Revolution and stuff like that. And kind of like the heritage of the city of Costa Mesa, because we do talk about that a lot here on the podcast where, uh, you know, we, we always kind of like tap back to like, what is God doing in Costa Mesa? Yeah. And, and maybe this region, you know, and how movements sometimes start here and then replicate in other places of the world. And even like when you movements think like... in companies. Yeah, yes. yeah, totally, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, because, you know, like, California, right? Like, 
Apple and like all these companies that start here and then they make big business around the world. So California is known for for that, but it's also spiritually kind of like known for for touching lives and generations yeah. through movements of God and stuff like that, right? So anyways, I was kind of curious, even tapping into the same verse I was talking with, like the more you seek of God, the sure. more it's revealed. Do you think that also kind of like passes on generationally? Do you feel connected? And would you, you know, maybe elaborate on mm. how are you connected to like even Chuck Smith or the sure, Calvary sure, Chapel yeah. movement? Um, is that is that passed on generationally or not? Or yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, I think sometimes, yeah. When we think about, well, okay, yeah, biblically, right? Like we see God's faithfulness is passed on. Uh, actually, just reading this morning, um, in this book I'm reading again called Pivot by Scott McKnight. Just being reminded of um, Paul writes to Timothy, and he's like, you know, I am so certain of the faith that's in you that was passed on to you from mm -hmm. your mother and your grandmother. So there yeah. is this generational faithfulness that can occur in families. Of course, that's up to, you know, each child and parent and how that dynamic works, right? And sometimes, you know, we try so desperately to pass on our faith, but maybe, right, we're passing on information, but maybe not character. Mm -hmm. So there's all sorts of ways that maybe this doesn't exactly happen. But I do think that is the idea of the biblical pattern. You know, when we look at even the way that God instructs the children of Israel, he says, look, I want you when you, you know, are journeying, when you lie down, when you wake up at, at meals, tell the story of how God redeemed you from Egypt, you know, tell them, you know, pass it on to your children. And so there's this idea that we would pass on the faithfulness of God and faithfulness to God to our children. And so, yeah, I mean, I think that is the ideal, you know, raise up a child in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart. This is the uh, principle of uh, this proverb. And, and yet, you know, that's not always the case. Yeah, so in my family, um, my grandfather, my mom's dad um, was Pastor Chuck Smith, as he's called, and he was the founder of what is now known as uh, Calvary Chapel. And so, you know, he pastored faithfully for many years. My dad, however, is, you know, not his son, but also felt called into the ministry after he married my mom. and. And so, you know, I grew up just in church, around church, and um, around ministry. Actually, when I was 13 years old, my family, we moved from um, Vista, California, down in North San Diego. Uh, our family moved to London, England, and wow. we planted a church there. Wow. And so, you know, like this principle, like leaving behind everything, mothers, fathers, mm. sisters, brothers, friends, family, wow. lands, houses, and, you know, pursuing you was a teenager 13 a yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so just leaving everything behind for the sake of the gospel we went there and you know like the generational passing i think so many of those um things that happened in my life i think were part of like apprenticeship right like you're observing your family do these things you're a part of it we were just talking beforehand like my parents' house, I would come home from a trip and there would be some person living in my room. It'd be like, oh, this is Sven. You know, he's from the Bible college. He's gonna live with us now. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, oh, okay, you know, <laughs> I've got a new, new roommate. roommate. Yeah, totally. Wow. And so our house was just like this. We had family members that would stay with us. Um, we had so many of our church meetings at our house. It was just kind of this revolving door of Christian community and fellowship. And so this is my life just growing up. I just was always around these things. and. And so now here I am, you know, I've been in Christian ministry for almost 20 years. And I think sometimes, you know, people are like, oh, well, you know, this is nepotism. You know, you're only in the position that you're in because of your family. And mm, it's like- They put you there. Yeah, but, and you're like, well, yeah, I am only in this position because of the family I grew up in. But when we look back a hundred years, like farmers, like, mm. you know, they had children. What did those children do? Usually there were farmers as well, right? Oh, <laughs> they were like mm -hmm. bankers, yeah. you know, Man, it's like train Moses their children. And Aaron. Yeah. And so there's this idea, like just in the family, a hundred years ago, your children carried on the family business. I mean, this is mm -hmm. even how Jesus talks uh, in the gospel of John. I only do what I've seen the father do. I wow. only say what the father told me to say. So yeah. apprenticeship 
is part of the biblical vision of how family works and how ministry, I think, is to work. And so when I think about just even my own call to ministry, I think God intended this for me because of my family history, because of the opportunities I had there. And I felt at a certain time a pull to teach God's word, to care for God's people. And I think it was, yeah, largely due to my family and the way that we lived our lives, the things that we valued, the things mm -hmm. that we sacrificed, it made a lasting impression on me. And so I am who I am today, like we all are, right? Because mm -hmm. of our parents' choices, whether good or bad. Mm -hmm. so. My daughter's teacher, her husband is a teacher and her family were teachers yeah. and everybody in their family, they're teachers. Yeah. They're like, you know, they pass and her daughters are teachers. Yeah. And she, uh, she was the best in the whole school. Yeah. The best experience with her. My daughter learned a lot. She uh, allowed me to be volunteering with her. I was like, how she did this? Yeah. You know, she can mm. have the control of the kids like easily. It's, it's natural. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's in her, you know. Yeah. And, it's, it's and that's beautiful, beautiful when beautiful. you see that, It's right? beautiful. Yeah, you're not like, and when how, you push un how unfair. Things, and, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. And, and, it's, and it's weird because it's not always like that. You know, I have a friend that her dad is a doctor and they push her to be a sure. doctor yeah, yeah. and she hated it. Yeah. But God called me to do this and my dad too and she's forcing to do it and it's been having she's she's having a hard time yeah because she thinks that but she's kind of 34 30 something she's like i'm not going to study something else i'm just going to keep doing mm. this yeah. <laughs> that's a sad yeah yeah there was a story that um there was a pastor from huntington beach i think it was andrew shea because back in the days I, I like when i listened yeah. to all these podcasts i would listen to andrew shea a lot i don't know why because um, I, I guess we were part of Rock Harbor back then, a uh, church here in town in Costa Mesa, and they had five different campuses, and one of them sure. was Huntington, you know, Beach. Huntington yep. Beach. And for whatever reason, you know, I like to tap into, like, I wonder, you know, what Andrew's talking about. But I remember he would he would say that he went to Bible college somewhere in, in the United States, yeah. right, like Nebraska or something like that. And it, it, he was really funny, you know, and he's like, you know, like, I'm, I'm not kidding you guys. Like, some of my teachers, they were atheists, you know, and they're teaching the Bible and all these things. But you could tell that they were just there for a paycheck. Mm. And, you know, if one of the things I noticed, because, uh, like I said, you know, we met you. And then uh, I think I was on the Internet, like, just looking for stuff on YouTube. And I'm like, oh, I wonder if I can listen to Char speaking, you know, to one of his sermons. Sure. And I'm like, oh, Calvary Chapel. Yeah, it's here. And I was listening to one of them and you were talking about Esther, the book of Esther. And for sure, you know, it was probably like a deep dive of several weeks, but I only listened to the, the one week. And to me, right, this is just my vantage point, but I could, I could really tell like this guy is passionate. You know, this guy loves what he's talking about. This guy loves God. I mean, mm. that's kind of like a, a big assumption, you know, and um I'm not, I would probably wouldn't say you can tell, but in a sense, you you can tell, yeah. right? Jesus said by their fruit, you will recognize them, you know? So maybe by their fruit of how passionate I could tell you where about sharing the story, you know, and how Esther, you know, the, the role that God is playing in the story and all of that. I'm like, this, mm -hmm. this guy really loves Jesus, loves the Bible, loves the stories, loves people, you know? It's almost like you can... You can see it through the way you're preaching, you know. So that to me was was really powerful, and uh, all that to say, I mean, uh, kind of like to, in Spanish we say to throw flowers to yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> charte flores. But I I think it's beautiful to know that, like you're saying, you know, when when you were saying this, uh, like legacy passed yeah, yeah. on, you know, and teach our kids, and hopefully, you know, they they continue with following God and following you know, the, the love for people and all of that. And I was thinking of Moses and Aaron, you know, because a lot of people accuse them of nepotism. True, yeah. Of like, oh, you're just putting him as a priest because he's your, he's your relative, right, you yeah. know? And he's like, no, I mean, he was appointed by God and God told me and all of that. And it's kind of like, I guess, if we give a little bit of uh, benefit of the doubt 
to the skeptical. Sure, yeah. From the outside, it can kind of look like that, right? Like, oh, how coincidental that you know, Moses and Aaron are relatives yeah. and that he becomes a priest and you're our leader and sure. you have the law and stuff. Yeah. But I think it's, it's, it's actually beautiful because I would say, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go back thousands of years back, but I could almost say Aaron had that passion, yeah. you know, like it, it was visible in him. Like he's not doing it for a paycheck. He's not doing it for sure. that. Mm. He's doing it as part of a family. They really love God and they, re they really love what they're doing, you know. So, like doing your podcast, Beto. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like if one of my kids would say, you know, uh, we would we would see, right, if, if they do a podcast and they really pick it up. There you like, go, yeah. Yeah, it is really interesting, though, I mean, because there is that side of things, right, where it's like we shouldn't be disqualified just because of uh, a family connection and a legacy and those things. It, so it neither qualifies nor disqualifies, right? And so it really is about... Um, character at the end of the day, right? And calling. It's like, okay, like, does this person actually, you know, manifest a love of God, like you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. Is it clear in them? Is they have a, a clear understanding? Or is it just like, you can tell like, okay, like the apple fall fell far from the tree here, right? Mm -hmm. It's like the calling is not passed on, you know, I, and, and, you know, I've got three siblings, um, and none of them are in Christian ministry in the way that I am. You know, they're all walking with Jesus, love Jesus, um, passionate about their craft, and you know, bring the gospel any opportunity they have where they work. But they're not in ministry. I'm the only one that did. And even out of all of my cousins, I think I have 24 cousins well, on, on the Smith side. I, I could be miscalculating a little, but currently I'm the only one that's in pastoral ministry. So even that, you know, it's not like. It's just a shoe in, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But there is a calling, and obviously, there's the character that goes along with that that you have to cultivate. And, um, but yeah, it's really interesting, kind of what you're talking about. Um, my grandpa, um, he he's got an interesting story. Um, so he grew up in California, born and raised here, and I think we go back six generations on each side of my family in California. So we have a lot of history here, uh, and especially in this area. Southern California, but um, he was taught to read the Bible Why my great grandma would be ironing their clothes and doing the laundry. And so he would have the scriptures out and he'd read. And when he came across a word, he couldn't, you know, he'd sound it out and she'd help him. And so he talks about just from such a young age that he just, you know, knew the scripture. And, you know, this is before movies, I think my grandpa saw like one movie in his whole life and it was Snow White and he felt super convicted about it. That's a whole different story. But <laughs> right, like, like well. he says that as a kid, like his imaginary friends were David and Jonathan wow. and he would go out to the field to play, you know, and, and that's the world that he lived wow. in. And you could really see this in the way that he taught. Um, he was a storyteller, mm. but, um, but all that to say, like, I feel like scripture, it captured his heart, mm. it captured his imagination. And I can say honestly that, um, not trying to, but this is what's happened to me as well. Um, I have, you know, seen in Jesus the meaning of life, right? That he is the true human who brings us back to uh, what God created us for, right? To mm -hmm. live with God, to rule over God's creation um, in, in peace and harmony and, you know, just, you know, the biblical world, shalom, peace on every side, that Jesus is the one that brings us back into that. And so that just like, has just captured my heart, captured my imagination. And so I think when I read scripture to see the big picture and to make all the connections, how it all comes back mm. to Jesus. C.S. Lewis had this um, line, I think it's from his book, Mere Christianity. He says, you know, I believe in Christianity um, like I believe in the sun, not because I see the sun, but by the sun, I see everything else. Mm. And I th feel like that's how it, it's just happened for me, you know, just mm. getting to know the scripture. I just see, man, like it illuminates the world for me. You know, like uh, the scripture says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. It lights up the world. So I understand the meaning of life, you know, and how Jesus, you know, brings us into that fulfillment of the meaning of life. So, yeah, so there's a legacy there for sure that's been passed on. Um, yeah, and I'm really, I'm really thankful for it. And, you know, um, it just so happens that I am 
in January, I'm going to step into uh, the church that my grandpa pastored for over 40 years, which is pretty wild turn of event, something I never expected, but I'm going to be the lead pastor of Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. So. Oh, congratulations. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's huge. huge. Who would have thought? <laughs> that's huge. That's huge. I mean, that's awesome, man. And okay. So let me tell you a somewhat quick story. <laughs> or maybe not. not Hopefully big. it'll be shorter than the story I just told. So. Oh, the story <laughs> sure is going to take long. Uh, okay, so let me tell this story. I, I grew up in Mexico, right? And I remember listening to a lot of Christian music because I had an era like my, my Christian music era, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you know, the, the world's music is bad. I shouldn't listen to Mana and like all these rock artists from Mexico. <laughs> I should listen to only Christian music, but the only really good Christian music available back then was English, you know, speaking sure. music. And so anyways, I went to my like local Christian so library. So that's how he learned English, through the music. Yeah, partly, for sure. Heck yeah, that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. You better start so, listening in Spanish. That's right. That's yeah. how I'm going to happen. I mean, if happen. you want to learn Spanish... <laughs> Start by listening to the music that people listen to, right? In their go. language. So for sure, I mean that that's a big one. Oh, okay, so I'll, I'm I'm gonna totally <laughs> derail to another story, okay? And then bring Here me back go. to this one because this okay. one was fun. But uh, I had a friend in Mexico who loved listening to music in English and learned English just because of music. Yeah. Okay, never been in the United States whatsoever. I mean, I I saw him grow up, right? Um, part of our church in Mexico. And then one day he went to get his, he, well, visa. try to get a visa at the, yeah. at the American Council at um, Guadalajara City. So he goes there. They ask him all these kinds of questions. He responds to all of them in English. And they're like, there's no way. You've been, you've been living illegally in the U.S. We're going to cancel. We're not going to give you a visa. He's like, what? No <laughs> I've way. I've never been in the he U.S. He was doing his best. <laughs> yeah. So sad. He was doing his best. Because you know, his like, English was that good. They just assumed. English was, and no they assumed like, way. you have been in the United States no illegally <laughs> and you learn English. There's no way you could have it's learned so English mean. in Mexico. You know? Now, in an interesting turn of events, he ended up uh, getting to know one of the, like a woman that worked there eventually right i mean this is years later yeah. and she's like okay once she knew the story like come to me and give him a visa i think he lives in texas now you know the last time i checked which is funny right but i mean that's an interesting derailed story yeah. um, when off script so I'll bring him back to my story. So I'm in Mexico. Oh, wow. See, <laughs> his story is going to be longer than well, yours. I, mean, long. I feel like this is just a moment though. Like forget, forget Duolingo, <laughs> you know, just yeah. pick up some yeah. CDs in Spanish and yeah, have at it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, totally. So I would listen to music in English, you know, Michael W. Smith. Jennifer Knapp, all these people. That actually, I had Jennifer Knapp on the show like long ago, you know, was an interesting one because <laughs> of her background. But anyways, that's kind of yeah. like another story. But um, all that to say, you know, you can listen to previous episodes. There's still like cool stuff to listen to. But uh, so I'm listening to all this music and then came an album called Wow. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was, Wow was the secular one, right? Wow. There was Wow and Now, okay, and I can now. never remember which one was okay, which. I think Now, <laughs> I think Now was like the secular music, right? So it was like a compilation of like the best artists sure. or the popular top music hits. back then, yep. top hits. So it was a CD. So instead of buying you no know, twenty CDs and spending all your money, you would buy one CD with the best of each, mm -hmm. right? So you save money and you listen to the best songs, yeah, yeah. basically. And um, so, anyways, the Christian industry made their own that type of thing where they pulled like the best songs from every Christian artist and made an album. I think it was called wow. Yeah. <laughs> right. So not now, but wow. And, but the cool thing for me was that for, I think for two years, cause they would do it every year. They would bring out the album with the best music. Yeah. Right. So every year, okay. The new wow or the new now. And I would listen to the music and like, Oh cool. You know, Stephen Curtis Chapman or whomever, right? Like all these famous Mm -hmm. Christian music singers. But then when uh, at some point they came out with uh, not only the music, they came out with a DVD or I think it was actually a VHS, 
right? Video cassette. <laughs> wow. For the people that don't know. Wow. Yeah. We're <laughs> that really going we back. Are. <laughs> video cassette player where you would see a video of the artist, but then you would also listen to an interview oh, with okay. some of the artists, right? To me, that made, I think that's why we're doing what we're doing right now. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Because to me, to hear the stories of these artists was like so cool. You know, I remember one of them was, um, uh, and she's been at Calvary Chapel a lot, I guess, with, with Greg Laurie. Um, Crystal Lewis. Crystal Lewis. Yeah, yeah. Right. So she had her songs, her hit song, you know, People Get Ready, yeah, Jesus Is that. Coming. Yeah. And maybe we can tap into that too. <laughs> <laughs> the second coming. Uh, but anyways, she had an interview, you know, and she lived back then. She lived in Newport Beach. And, you know, she's like on her kayak and she's like rowing and stuff. And then she's just sharing about her journey with Jesus. You yeah. know, oh, sometimes for me it's harder to, uh, what was she saying? I mean, I still remember the stories, right? Because oh, yeah. she was saying sometimes I would pick up a magazine and read it rather than pick up my Bible, right? Sure. I'm like, wow, she's human. Yeah, yeah. She's real, you know? So I love that part. Yeah. And I think partly, you know, I'm just saying all that story because to me, the, the, the fact that we're sitting here and we're just talking and we're getting to know each other, it's just so amazing. You know, it's, I feel like I'm tapping into that. Like the music was there. It was cool. But to get to know somebody's story, yeah, sure. somebody's journey, to me, is so the epic. The history. The history, yeah. right? So for, for us to be hearing, be sitting here, and getting to know you a little bit more and, you know, how you're connected to like Chuck Smith sure. you know, and all these movements that we've talked about here on the show. And we've reviewed, you know, Jesus Revolution yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. It's so cool. You know, it's just yeah. so awesome, you know. And yeah. I think that's all I wanted to say. Yeah. Just cool story. It was long. Yeah. <laughs> it was a really long story. <laughs> Sorry, Millie. Uh, no, it's okay. No, it's beautiful. It's yeah. fine. I never, I never knew that, Beto, about you. So Which see, part? The my listening to... Yeah, the, the video clips. You're learning something oh, really? new. Yeah, you never right shared now. that with me. Wow. That's nice. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's what I call <laughs> music. Yeah. That's great. Okay, so I have a friend which was part of our uh, rock, Spanish rock band. And now he's the worship leader here at our church, Palm Harvest in Costa Mesa. And he's phenomenal, like amazing bass player, you know, but he's a really great friend. And the other day we were talking and he was saying that he, when he was younger, you know, he's right now he's like 36, 37. But he said when he was younger, maybe like in his teens, yeah, like he remember and he grew up in a Spanish, Hispanic Pentecostal church here in Santa Ana and, you know, just say Orange County, sure. right? And um, he said that he was afraid when people would bring the idea of the rapture, hmm. right? And he's like, no, I can't believe, you know, like Jesus is going to come back. That means I'm not going to be able to like watch the World Cup. Mm -hmm. No, he's probably going to come before the <laughs> World yeah. Like it saddened him that he wasn't going to get to see, you know, his favorite totally. soccer yeah, yeah. players um, watch the World Cup, you know, and... I mean, that's, I don't want to like do a, like a theological debate, you know? Yeah, sure. But to me, it's interesting, you know, that, that people, as we were saying uh, with Krista Lewis, she had a famous song that was on the radio for years and years that said, people get ready, Jesus is coming, soon we'll be going home. Yeah. Right? And I think, I think they took it out of the radio because they realized, okay, Jesus is not coming <laughs> we might as well pull the mm. song of the radio. <laughs> What's your take on that? You know, just culturally. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Do you think that damage people like my friend? You know, I didn't think it damaged him, but in a sense, like he was really saddened, like yeah. legit saddened that like I may not be able to see my favorite and, team. And I think as a, as a little kid, we all experienced that. Mm. I remember I grew up Catholic, yeah. right? And we have a huge explosions near my house. Mm -hmm. And one gas station dropped all the gas and the waters uh, in the pipes. Uh huh. Oh, wow. yeah. So it starts to explode everything doo, 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 like crazy. So <laughs> I grab my Bible, I dress up all like uh, 
Ready white to go. and ready to go with cheese. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I was yeah. like, okay, night night. Yeah. If I don't wake up, I'm ready. You yeah. know, all white with my Bible. <laughs> and it wasn't because of the rapture. It was just like no, okay. but, but you know, bad things happen, and I thought yeah. it's gonna be sure. the end of the my world. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I do think that <clears throat> unfortunately there's been a lot of damage done by bad theology, mm. and so you know, let's just say for a minute, you know that the pre-tribulational, premillennial view is what the Bible teaches, right? Because mm -hmm. there are different views, right? There's, um, the Bible definitely teaches that there is a catching up of God's people to meet Jesus in the air. The question is, do we meet him in the air? Do we come right back down with him? Uh, do we meet him in the air? And the saints are whisked away to heaven while the judgment of God comes on the earth, right? Which is the pre-trib, uh, pre-mill view. But I do think just even this idea of, you know, I'm going to miss out on the World Cup if Jesus comes back. Oh, I'll never be able to be married. I'll, I'll never get to experience, a, you know, a family of my own. And I think anybody who grew up in the church in the 80s, 90s, uh, maybe even early 2000s had that sentiment, at least in, you know, Western evangelicalism. And I think a major contributor to this is a misunderstanding of the biblical idea of heaven, right? Mm -hmm. Because you know, we have actually adopted much more of a Greek idea, uh, Plato, uh, this would be called like a Platonistic view, right? Where um, the physical world is bad and the spiritual world is good. Mm -hmm. Heaven is a spiritual world, uh, earth is a physical world. And so everything that's bad and sinful is part of the physical world and will be, after death, will be whisked away to this, you know, um, bodiless place, you know, and we'll sit on clouds and we'll play harps and we'll sing hallelujah forevermore, <laughs> right? People are taking one passage in Revelation, and there it is, worshiping around the throne of God forever, forever. <laughs> and ever and ever. And you're just like, oh God, I, not me, I'm out. <laughs> <You know? laughs> if we're honest, right? If we're yeah. being honest about our doubts and our questions and wrestlings. And it's so unfortunate because the, the story of the Bible could be summarized and it's the story about heaven and earth. Right, mm. And in the beginning, God creates the heavens and the earth. And the picture in Genesis even is that heaven and earth are one, but because of sin, they're separated, mm. right? And the whole story is about how there is gonna be a new heaven and mm. a new earth that is gonna be brought about through God's redemption, right? And so heaven and earth are gonna be one again. And when we look at the end of the Bible, right, we see the new Jerusalem, not that we go to, but that comes out of heaven from God That's to crazy. the earth. And we reign on the earth with God. So we're going to meet in the middle, you think? I don't know He's if it's... A, yeah, I mean... It's up and... I think, you know, I don't necessarily know like where in time and space it's all going to happen. But I think just the idea is like these are two halves that make a whole is mm. the picture that scripture is trying to give us again and again. Uh, C.S. Lewis in his book... Um, <clears throat> The Great Divorce, mm. he just does such a great job of helping us understand that uh, the heavenly world, um, the new world that is to come, that God will mm. recreate, is not less physical, but more physical. Mm. Because it's like when the spiritual and the physical come together, it's more real, more alive. And so he pictures that the human beings that go to this realm, when they touch the blades of grass, they hurt their feet because it's more physical, it's more real than even they are, wow. you know? And so I think what we need to remember is the world that we live in now is broken and tainted by sin, but the world that God recreates will be this world just like, you know, I don't know how, how we like times it, right? It's like, but like, imagine the most beautiful moment setting, whether it's a wedding celebration, which is what the scripture uses as a picture of it, right? It's the time with all your kids around, you know, mm -hmm. maybe a holiday or something like that, where everybody's gathered together. There's such joy, peace, and harmony. The scriptures are constantly saying, that is what the kingdom of heaven will mm -hmm. be like. Take your best day ever, mm -hmm. where there is such peace with God, with yourself, with one another, even just with the world around you, that is what the kingdom of heaven will be like. And we're called to reign over that kingdom with God forever and ever and ever. So unfortunately, we've actually sold ourselves short on the real story of the Bible, right? Nobody's going to miss out. Like, if I don't get to see my grandchildren, guess what? I will 
not be thinking about that mm. in the kingdom of God, right? There will mm. be so many brothers and sisters and family of God to enjoy forever and ever and ever. And so it, it's so unfortunate, I think that we, it's just bad Bible reading. You know, it's mm. like we're taking one passage of scripture and we're focusing on it and we're kind of neglecting the rest of the text. Yeah, and, we and, don't you know, see the whole picture. Yeah, we need to let the whole script of scripture speak to us, you know? Yeah. Wow, that's good. You want to say something? And it's funny because we are learning about heaven right now. Yeah. And I was like, I never knew that we have two heavens, one and two. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it, it's been kind of hard, you know, to learn more about, you know, but I, I love the idea that we're going to have a perfect body. Mm. Yeah, because it's, we're not going to be on pain. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we were discussing if we we're gonna eat or we're not gonna eat. What kind of animals? My daughter is pretty excited. Yeah. Because she thinks that it's gonna be dinosaurs. Wow. At heaven. Yeah. And I she's mean, so excited. It's like why not? You know, maybe that new creatures. Maybe I mean, <laughs> new creatures. You yeah. know, because you're like I miss right them. Right in a stegosaurus. Yeah. You know, I, I, she loves dinosaurs. Yeah. Like I I know you know in heaven we're gonna have dinosaurs yeah. back. <laughs> you know yeah. what? Actually, a really um, I think a great picture that scripture gives us again and again of what, you know, the new world will be like. You know how, um, maybe you guys can finish this for me. Um, the angels around the throne sing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is... You know, uh, yeah. Filled? Yeah, with... His glory? Filled with his glory. Ah. And so, like, yeah. if you think about, like, okay, what is that message <laughs> saying? Like, the, the world is like a cup a vessel mm. that is waiting to be filled up with the glory of God. Mm. It's empty right now, you know, and it's mm. meant to be filled with God's glory, his wow. presence, his goodness. And so that's what the world to come will be. It's not a different kind of world. It's, it, it, it is this world, mm. but filled with Fulfill. glory. Wow. Fulfilled. Mm. Yeah. It would yeah. be a great way that the scripture pictures it. And so yeah. unfortunately we think Heaven, we think less than, you know, we, I do a radio show on Mondays uh, from our radio station, K-Wave, and it's a call-in show, you know, it's called Pastor's Perspective. And many times we get this question, oh, will I know my family members in heaven? You know, and sometimes we're, we, we just mess with people, you know, it's like, well, listen, you won't be more stupid. When you get to heaven, it's just you know you're going to be more intelligent. You will be fulfilled. Yeah. All that's lacking, you know, even like when we look at the. Sorry, I'm like on a tangent right now. But even like when we look at the miracles of Jesus, mm -hmm. like John calls Jesus's miracles signs. And so what's happening mm -hmm. is the deaf can hear, the blind can see, the lame can walk, the dead are raised. It's a reversal of all the brokenness of sin. It's a filling up. Mm -hmm and a re restoration of everything that's broken. That's what God's kingdom is like. Wow. And unfortunately, we go the opposite, right? We're like, oh, I'm not gonna know anybody. Mm. I'm gonna be sad when I'm in heaven because I won't have like, I won't be able to surf. My dog won't be there. You know, it's just like these things that we kind of attach to. Just singing all the time. I don't even like yeah, singing. I don't even right? like music. Yeah, yeah whatever, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's exactly right. Yeah. Is it going to be rock and roll or is it going to be classic? Yeah, because I hate jazz. So, you know, whatever, right? Yeah. Country music. That's true. Wow, that's so epic. And I mean, you made so many cultural references and I would love to kind of like end on maybe the future culturally where we mm. think we're going. But, you know, as you were saying, C.S. Lewis... And the great divorce, you know, it's, it reminds me like, I really want my rights. The guy's that's just there complaining like he wants his, that's what he says, right? Yeah, I really yeah. want my rights. <laughs> but um, anyways, that, that was kind of like the connection I wanted to make when I was talking about the, the CDs and the albums and, you know, how, whether you like it or not, right? Like we have our own theology and our theology informs us of, or gives us either hope mm. or, oh, yeah. or no hope for what's to come, right? Yeah. Like in this case, okay, this is the end. You know, yep. I'm not going to be able to ever be married and stuff or uh, or worse, you know, other things. But anyways, all that to say, um, where do you think we're going culturally? You know, some mm. of the references that I noticed is like you mentioned heaven and earth. I love that, you know, and I think I've, I've heard like Tim Mackey mm -hmm. mention yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, you know, for the people that don't know, he's with the Bible Project. 
I've heard another theologian from England, N.T. Wright. Yeah, N.T. Wright. He's mentioned a lot of like the, you know, the earth, the heaven and earth, rather than, you know, because for a lot of people, it's like, oh, the Bible is heaven and hell. Right. Right. No, it's heaven and earth. Yep. It's like God with us, God here, mm. right? Emmanuel yeah. and things like that. And so anyway, anyways, all that to say, like, I feel like there's, there's good theology out there, you know, there's, oh, yeah. and you no, know, the Bible project, I mean, whatever people take it, but to me, it's like, this is cool, you know? So where do you see that might be helpful, you know, as maybe even Christians producing content and, you know, trying to do music and music is going to have lyrics and lyrics yeah. is going to say, you know, whether Jesus is coming back soon or not, or things like that. Sure. You no. Know, what is your hope, even as you think of, of our kids, right? collectively your hope for them in in our culture mm. you know and maybe like our theological culture in a sense yeah yeah i mean i i hope for my kids the next generation of christians i hope that we can yeah recapture i guess a biblical theology kind of like what you're saying you know and and recognize i think you know that the church is always meant to be a prophetic witness you know, of mm. we're supposed to be a witness of the way things are meant to be, right? And that doesn't mean that our lives always reflect that or line up with that, but we're always working into that. We're a community that is living out the, the vision of the kingdom, right? This is Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, right? Uh, this is what the kingdom of God looks like. It's forgiving our enemies. It's uh, a way of peacemaking. It's a way of hungering and thirsting for righteousness. There's a humility, um, and a meekness that is supposed to mark God's people. And so I hope that by recapturing the biblical story of, you know, God reclaiming and redeeming this physical world that hopefully our children can step into and kind of build the next layer of that prophetic witness and how we steward over the things that God has given us, that we are witnesses. Oh, mm -hmm. God loves this world and he is actually going to rescue and redeem it. And so we are investing mm -hmm. in that. We are, you know, as heaven is, you know, kind of going back to where are we going to meet, right? As heaven is coming down, is there a way that we also can, you know, build up towards you know preparation and and envisioning man like we want to build towards the kingdom mm -hmm. as the king brings the kingdom you know not that we're going to meet in the middle but just this idea like that we're pursuing the kingdom we're living out the kingdom witness that you know as the world around us looks at us you know they would see what the they saw in the early church look how they love one another Mm. Look how they love even those that are not their own. Look how mm. they uh, respond to persecution and to hatred and being maligned. Look how they respond. This is a, a people like no other people. And, you know, I, I pray to God that that would be a invitation to live a whole different uh, human existence, the way that we've been, you know, created by God to live, redeemed by Jesus Christ to live. So I think... You know, even though at times, like maybe even today, yesterday, you know, I'm down in the dumps, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I think by and large, I'm hopeful mm -hmm. because all authority in heaven and earth has been given to Jesus Christ. He's the king. The story is almost over mm -hmm. where he steps down, he speaks, and he's going to make all things new. And so I think, man, like we just need to keep living as a faithful witness as the people of God, passing it on to the next generation. Um, living out that faithful witness until the king says time it's the end mm -hmm. yeah that's beautiful wow okay my my last comment then Millie's last comment but uh, as you were saying you know heaven and the beautiful picture of heaven i was reminded that when i was little maybe i don't know eight nine i had a recurring dream where i i, I was somewhere in like outer space and it was like beautiful garden mm. And for whatever reason, I thought I was like, I had died and I went to the next world, yeah, yeah. right? And it was just beautiful garden. And every now and then, you know, um, like one time it happened to me at Sunset Ridge Park here in Newport Beach, where the sun was just like in the right spot. The weather was just like in the right, you know, feeling. And my kids were there. And just for a moment, I, I it just brought me back to that you know, infant, or not mm. infant, but you know, childhood memory of my dream. Like, oh, this is what heaven was like for me in my, yeah. in my dream. You know, it's just like beauty, sun, 
perfect weather, families having a great time. And um, and it happened to me like another time when I was dropping the kids off. It was like same thing, you know, the mm. sun was shining in the right spot. The flowers looked like a beautiful, you know, golden tone. It's like, wow, this is, this. Is, it felt unreal. You yeah, know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's just like a glimpse. It's just maybe like 30 seconds that it passes through your yeah. mind. It's like, wow, God must have an amazing place for us. It's the earth can be so beautiful, yeah, yeah. Mm. right? The, the the next thing he does, you know, whether it's here or whatever he wants to take us, I don't know, uh, at least in my view, right? I, I think it's going to be beautiful, you know? So I'm looking forward to that with, at the same time, while, you know, just living out life with, what did you say? <laughs> with hope yeah, and the expectation that, like you said, you know, Jesus said, my father is always working, yeah. so God is always working. And also yeah. he'll be working through our kids and their generations to come. So yeah. that's cool. You want to say something, Millie? Yeah, I just will tell uh, people who's listening that if you have experience or you hear someone who is trying to share the gospel and telling you who is Jesus and... They they give you no hope. Yeah. Just be careful. Yeah. That is not coming from God. Amen. You know. So yeah. watch out, watch out, and yeah. hopefully God give you wisdom. You know, through discern who's talking to you. Yeah. Because I think in this world the evil one is working everywhere, and uh, that would be awesome if we pray to God for that wisdom. Yeah. To to so we can we can know who who is talking. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's such a great point. I mean, the good news is the story of God's redemption, mm. right? And unfortunately, we've turned the good news into you are a sinner who needs to ask Jesus into your heart so you can go to heaven when you die so you don't go to hell. Yeah. And it's like, okay. Yes, we that's are, what people We know are sinners. In their hearts. We do need to be forgiven. Mm -hmm. But the good news is how God has Dreaming. redeemed us, how he's become king over Israel again, mm -hmm. how right the price has been paid, the way to the kingdom of God has been opened up for us. Everyone can come home. That's the good news. Mm -hmm. And now as we're coming home, like, oh my gosh, we have to turn from what we're pursuing, what we're after, the things that we're worshiping, centering our lives around. We have to turn from those things. The biblical word repent, right? Mm -hmm. And we have to turn towards the true one, the true king, and align our lives with his, right? It's like, man, that's good news. And that actually applies to everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Love that. So beautiful. Okay. So let's end with this. Char, how can we pray for you? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I think the thing I always ask for and I recognize I need so much is just wisdom, right? There's um, the local church that I'm at. Um, we have so many incredible ministries and resources and I have a wonderful team that I work with, but you know, like Paul says, who is sufficient for these things, right? Just to oversee this community of faith, to use these resources in a way that glorifies the Lord Jesus Christ and also blesses and, and cares for everyone as well, right? Like Christian ministry is not just about the goal. It's also about how we get there, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that it's not just about, oh yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get to the good, but like, are we doing good along the way? Are people being blessed along the way? And so I just feel like I'm constantly like, Lord, just give me wisdom. Like what is the right, um, what is the right way? And then how do we go about that? You know, how do we care well? How do we bring along as many people as possible? How do we empower and release people to the ministry and opportunities that you've called them to? So, yeah, I just need, I need wisdom. Yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, I'll pray and then you pray, Millie? Yeah. Sass. Lord, we thank you so much. We just want to put this, this time in your hands. This is precious, holy time you've given us with our brother, Char. Um, I'm just so grateful, Lord, for this opportunity to maybe just make a, a dream come true, you know, to be able to sit with people that I consider heroes, you know, and it's awesome, Lord, that you have given us this privilege to share with one another and it's almost like the, the great superheroes know with great 
power comes uh, greater responsibility, Lord. So I pray that as Char is stepping into um, maybe a bigger role, uh, you know, different kind of position at Calvary Chapel, uh, that you will give him what he's asking, Lord. He's asking for wisdom. So grant him the wisdom, Lord, to lead with courage, to lead with faithfulness to your word, to lead with love, to lead with compassion, and to love his family well, Lord, that in the middle of this journey, Lord, you protect his kids, his wife, um, that your angels surround him, Lord, and surround his family, that he knows that you got him, that he knows that you are for him, that mm. you, he knows you are for his family, Lord, and um, that you are with us, Lord, mm -hmm. that you're Emmanuel, that you are real, that you care for us, Lord. So thank you so much for this time. Thank you for his life and thank you for the ways you're using him. Lord, I am just so thankful. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. Thank you for your love. Thank you because you love us. Thank you, God, because um, because you are God and you are everything we need. Thank you for uh, this time. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for chart. God, thank you because what he's asking you is wisdom. Thank you, God, for his heart. Uh, he comes to you with that humility to to know that he don't know uh, everything right and the wisdom is coming from you and because he is asking for that I'm asking God to fulfill all his needs you know cover his heart Jesus and make him know that he's fighting in victory because you win already God he win already you win already when the fights from the devil are when he's attacking we don't need to fight back because he lost already thank you Jesus for what you're doing in our lives in this moment and thank you for everybody who's listening to or who listen to this podcast and bless their lives and cover their needs and hopefully they can know you more and more Jesus we love you so much Amen Amen So good Thank you Char Yeah, my pleasure I know you said you are um, with Calvary Chapel's um, K-Wave Mm -hmm. Right? You want to give a shout out maybe where people can listen to that if they want to ask you questions personally there? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So uh, kwave.com is the website. Mm -hmm. um, our radio signal is 107.9 locally, FM. Um, I'm forgetting our AM station right now, so forgive oh. me that. Uh, but yeah, uh, every day at 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., we take calls. Called The show's called Pastor's Perspective. Um, I'm on every Monday at 3 okay. on that show. And then my sermons are also um, on um, K-Wave on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. So okay. yeah, we've got a slot right there for our YouTube? church. You have your own YouTube too? I do not. I mean, our church does. We've oh, got a okay. YouTube, Venmo, okay. we have Vimeo and all that. But yeah, yeah. I'm so like not techy. Like, I mean. <laughs> yeah, like even like, like, yeah, I'm a musician, but like I have tube amps and like every, everything's oh, analog for me. I've got nice. records. You know? So like That's when cool. it comes to computer stuff, email, you know, Word, <laughs> PowerPoint. PowerPoint. That's what I could do. <laughs> you know? I love it. That's so good. But I, thank I, you I need so much, friends. Char. Yeah. That's good oh, enough. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you. We'll see you guys on the next <laughs> one. My friends just want to tell you, if you enjoy this, well, like, subscribe, share this episode with a friend. Make sure you follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. On YouTube, you can subscribe to the channel. We have English and Spanish channels, so look them up. 
or you can just go to christianpodcast.com and all the links are there so it makes it super easy right so this episode will be there we'll see you guys on the next one ciao how do you guys do it in spanish you just have like a <laughs> <laughs>